Cooper is in D. This is in D. I know, the other school. Cooper, yeah. Yeah, I don't know where she's in Little Hooper. All right, don't forget, you gotta steer me. You I try to steer you, I got your timer down here. You just had a little piece sticking out. I have one in my pocket. I have to read it. No, like on the front, oh, when you adjust like, the headphones, you push your hair up. Uh, I don't want you to look at it. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. There you go. Don't. Yeah, I don't don't I go back and then push it. forward. There you go. <laughs> Hubby's watching. Did you just see here? No, I see the whole thing. Oh, I see know. him. Yeah, <laughs> it's like just like his snow. It's like a walk at all. Alright, so you're gonna. I got this. You got the script. You see what I'm saying here and stuff. Did you tell Jack that Bitney died? Bitney? No. I thought you said he died years ago. That was my, <laughs> my first talk. No, I, said I still have this one. No, I said Hooper died. No. Didn't you just say Hooper died? I said, who's Hooper? And you said, my old my dog. Other my dog. other dog. Oh, other, I said. <laughs> All right. You got to have always been, look at how oh. nice he is, that dog. I wish we had our mic, but I wonder how, ask Jackie how exactly if she can hear us. I'm going to pull up just to make sure that I can see anybody writing in. Well, I, we had just asked the friends in Facebook out there, can you hear us? If not... The only one that can answer is Jonathan. Right? Yeah, John, I think, is the only one watching right now. <laughs> we have thousands of followers. Thousands. Uh, just John. What is this on? John just keeps... 60. Is this on, what is it called? Uh, uh, my house out radio. Yeah, house out radio, Facebook. Yes. yes. Can she uh, hear? Yeah. That's the, can yeah, she exactly. hear us though? Exactly. <laughs> right. All right. People are saying they can hear us, so that's good. Welcome everybody, welcome to the Dish Con Dogs. I am your host, Mike Gould, and we're here tonight with the lovely Ashley Pizzo. And for those of you lucky enough to be on Facebook Live, you'll see her faithful companion and sidekick, Indy. Yep. How, what is it, it, Ashley, Indy's a rescue dog or no? Yep, got him from Brookhaven. Um, he was about four months old, and he's about, I want to say about six now. Okay, so folks, if you're listening there and you have access to Facebook, go on Facebook Live on Houndstown Radio Facebook and you'll see Indy. And in fact, during one of our seven minute commercials, for those of you on Facebook Live, we're just gonna show you 
how how well a dog can be a good companion without going crazy and spending a lot of money. But uh, so yeah, so Houndstown USA is home to the happiest dogs on earth. In a few minutes, we're going to talk about the show and what we do and how we do it and what the purpose of the show is. But first, we'll talk about Houndstown USA, home to the happiest dogs on earth. Houndstown is, of course, a fully interactive doggy daycare primarily. And Ashley Pizzo happens to be our, our animal management coordinator. So she has a, a, a knack of putting, oh, there goes Indy. She has a knack of putting packs of dogs together. And dogs, by nature, are pack animals. So what we provide at Houndstown USA is this fully interactive environment where dogs can be dogs, just like children need to play with other children, for not only for the physical activity, but for the socialization to learn how to play with other dogs. So it's very important. So, so we'll talk more about Houndstown USA with our seven locations on Long Island, our 15 locations in five different states. And if you want information about it, go to houndstownusa.com. Uh, if you ever wanted to own a franchise, if you ever wanted to be the master of your domain, so to speak, where you make the decisions and run a business, but have the assistance of run a, a, a run a business, but have the assistance of a very uh, strong franchise. Did you know, Ashley, that Houndstown franchise was voted the top 50 by Entrepreneur Magazine? That's pretty good. That's yeah. Of course, you might notice, folks, somebody missing here, uh, or my other co-host, Jackie Van Dam, but she quit on us, so she's not here today. But uh, so, so Ashley's kind enough to jump in that seat. Uh, Indy's here. So, so what is the dish on dogs? What exactly are we doing? With, what is the purpose of this show? Yeah. I think the purpose here is mainly to get people to realize, you know, kind of what their dogs are thinking, and it's not as complex as some people are thinking. Think it is. It's kind of simpler. Yeah, much simpler, much simpler. Right. So that's a good, good, good way of putting it. So what I would say to the folks listening: if your dog barks, pulls on the leash, humps, jumps, chews your shoes, begs at the table, all of these behaviors, they're actually normal for dogs to do. As we discuss this uh, going through the show, especially in the second and third segment, we'll tell you why the dogs are doing that. So it's actually quite natural for a dog to do it. What's unnatural is the human response to that. So if you're you know, throwing cans of pennies at your dog or spraying it with a water bottle or do screaming and yelling, you're making huge mistakes and you're actually confusing your dog, confusing it. So the human brain and the dog brain, are, they're similar but yet different. A dog's brain is simple, the human brain is complicated. So humans complicate everything. Think about it. Think of everything is complicated. People are Googling, and it's worse now than ever. You know, the dog's tail isn't weird, just like your children. If your ch a child has a runny nose, you're on WebMD trying to diagnose it. More often than not, you're getting yourself all worked up over a common cold. Uh, but but so, so the internet has actually, I don't think we've been busier. And, and Ashley does most of the behavioral work with uh, what would you say? Don't you see this craziness in, in the dog world? Yeah, yes, you do. Uh, you know, more firsthand, I mean, you know, we have a lot of customers and a lot of dogs that come in during the day, even just for daycare. Um, you know, I think a lot of people bring their dogs to daycare somewhat guilty because, you know, they feel like they don't want to leave the dog home alone. But, I mean, at least this environment is a very good environment for the dog. They get to, you know, no stress. There's no expectations put on them. Right. You know. So right, so that's a good point. So it's an emotional business, number one. So right. the humans, what dogs don't have and humans do have is guilt. Humans have guilt, and I would say the, the guilt emotion is probably one of the big prohibitors in human growth to begin with, right? You feel guilty about this, you feel guilty about that. We feel guilty about our children. I, I have to work two jobs, I feel guilty. The other kids next door got an iPad, I feel guilty. The same thing applies to the dogs. Dogs don't feel guilt. They don't feel guilt. They are, that's why they're so wonderful. They're just happy to be here, as long as they feel safe and secure. When they're not safe and secure, that's when troubles begin. So the dish on dogs, this is only our second week, and uh, we're gonna be talking every week. It's gonna be a continuum, a continuation of the week before. So those of you who listened last week, we talked, we, we said something, 
So dogs respond to changes in their environment. That's what they do. That's why they make wonderful police dogs, guide dogs, everything. We rely on dogs to detect anomalies in the environment that we take for granted. So we block out, the human brain has something called inattentional blindness, where we block things out or else we'd never leave the house. If you walked out your front door and noticed every leaf blowing or every tree or every bird or every sound, you'd never leave the house. So we block them out in order for us to function. Our human brain allows us to block things out, extraneous things that are in our environment constantly. You know, noise, cars, the garbage man, you don't really hear these things. They're part of our, our environment. Uh, dogs, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, they detect every minutia, every change in environment, whether it's a sound, an odor, or a sight, they see movement. Movement is one of the biggest triggers. Right. So we're gonna do a demonstration, actually, so before we, we, do, we started the show, Ashley and Indy was doing a little work outside here in the airport, we're in an airport. Think about how crazy an airport is. There's a PA system. Dogs don't know what that is. We kind of don't even hear the, the announcements half the time. We walk through the airport, we miss our flight because we didn't hear the announcement because we, we're blocking that out. Inattentional blindness requires us to block it out. Indy, had like he thought it was the the gods in uh, heaven calling out to him to do something the movement so we're going to show a little demonstration how how difficult it is for dogs to understand these changes in their environment but how easy it is for us to react to them and teach them that it's all good so it's a it's a funny kind of concept so what we do is bridge the gap the anthropomorphic gap from human needs and emotions to dogs. Dogs don't need a five acre backyard. They don't need a tempur bed. They don't need bottled water. They don't, you know, their needs are much simpler than ours. So that's the focus on the dish on dogs. So as I said, last week we talked about don't look, talk, or touch the dog. And people look at me like I'm crazy. Like, how can I not look at my dog? And we're gonna go into depth next segment. How powerful the human eyes are. If you stare at things, if you go to the mall and start staring at somebody's kid and then go up to them and pinch their cheeks, you're probably going to get arrested. But with dogs, we violate that all the time. Right. And we'll talk, right? Don't we, we see this you all the you time. Say, you always mention the subway because I was in the city about a week ago, and it is. You don't make even eye contact, and you're sitting on top of people in the subway cars. Right. Nor do you walk into each other, right? You could be walking in. No, and you're not looking at them either. Right. It's very fluid. Fluid, good word. It's very fluid and uh, morphic. Like there's a morphic birds. Right. You don't see birds crashing into each other when they're flying. So that's exciting. So you're listening to the dish on dogs. So when you join us after the break, we're only taking a two minute break. Right. If you hang out on Facebook, I'm going to show you things that are silly. Why dogs sounds of <coughs> squeaky dog toys. We're going to explain all these things. Why these these noises and sounds and movement disrupts the dog and gets them out of balance. Why, when your doorbell rings, does the whole house go crazy? I asked, actually asked Jackie last week how dogs tell time, and we're going to explain to that, how dogs tell time in the third segment. And some of this is so easy. I describe it almost like a magic trick. You know, you see a magician do something so simple, and you can't understand it. And then you learn the trick, and you're like, that's it? That's the trick? So for all of you folks that have been working on your dog's behavior for months and you've got books and videos and you're paying dog trainers, you don't have to do it. So in, we're going to break. We're going to come back to the dish on dogs. Uh, watch us on, what is it, Houndstown? Houndstown Radio. And ha HoundstownUSA.com? Yep, is our website. Um, and you can check us out there. All right, we'll be back in uh, a couple of minutes and uh, we'll talk again. Oh, do you remember we did training with the dog Toby? Jackie's he had a leash aggression. Wait, say hi to everybody on Facebook. <laughs> you know what Jackie's saying? Say hi, squeak, <laughs> human brain, pinch collars, bad, you bad. You got all bad things for doggies. Bad, bad. Treats we have. Um, say this again. We have.
had um, Rachel's watching. Um, and her and her husband came in with their two dogs, Ramsey and Toby, and he was just in the training with them. And he was leash aggressive. And uh, he actually got into a slight dog fight um, while they were away. They had him on a picture of their nephew watching the dog. And that's why they called you, because the dog's dragging across the lead, the, yeah. the kid across the street, and uh, went after another dog. But uh, he passed his evaluation today, so he'll be coming to daycare. They checked in. They said that oh, so you helped them understand their dog, and uh, that they met me today, and they're going to be starting. Uh, they're doing abortion. They met you today for the temp test. Yeah, for oh, the evaluation. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Let's see what Jackie has to say. Yeah, we had like ten listeners at one point. We did. Yeah, we're up to nine right now. Wow, nine listeners. <laughs> oh my. Uh, John must have shared it. I wonder if I can get him back on the chair. Yeah, try it back. When's the break, is it? When's the seven minutes? This is two minutes, the next one's seven. Welcome back, everybody. Well, welcome back to the Dish on Dogs. I'm your host, Mike Gould. As I said, if you were watching the first segment, I'm joined here by the lovely Ashley Tizzo and her wonderful companion, Indy. Yep. A rescue dog. Remember that, a rescue dog. Didn't cost her a penny. Did a couple of bucks. No, it didn't. It was actually free adoption month in Brookhaven, so I got it for free. That's awesome. All right, so Houndstown, USA is home to the happiest dogs on earth. And what we do primarily is fully interactive daycare, meaning dogs come to us. Yep. You, Ashley Tizzo, puts them in play. We call them play groups, and you know, Mother Nature calls them packs of animals, packs of predators, because that's what your dog is, is a predator. We're predators. What does that mean? That means dogs hunt, kill, and eat things. And guess what humans do? Hunt, kill, and eat things. Only nowadays we have people, you know, like whole foods go out and hunt and kill our right. food, so we don't do it ourselves. But other than vegetarians like Jackie, we are predators, and our dogs are predators. It doesn't make them bad. That doesn't mean it's bad, but that's what mammals do. That's how mammals live and survive. So the biggest problem that we see when we're dealing is people don't get it. So they're using their human brain, and for those of you on Facebook, you can see me wearing my human brain. So what I'd like to consider a good dog trainer or a good behaviorist, whatever you want to call it, I'd like to consider them bilingual. So we can talk to humans, and then we can take our human brain off, and then talk to the dog. Because communicating to a dog is so simple that most people can't do it. Because dogs, react to the subtlest movement and sound. Subtle, subtle, and not big. So I have people screaming at their dogs, no, sit, stay. And I just, I, I look at it, of course, we look at it like it's insanity, because if you had a, a, a person that didn't speak your language and you just screamed at them, it doesn't make them hear any better, right? So if you're speaking to somebody, you're trying to have a conversation that with somebody that speaks Lebanese, Right? Well, you can't, you're the louder you can't talk. You're, the only way you can communicate to them is to learn Lebanese. Right. So what do you see as we're working with our dogs every day? So last week we talked about don't look, talk, or touch. And we also said tension. And that's what you're going to demonstrate on the next segment. Is the next segment the seven-minute segment? Yes, it is. All right. So the next segment 
It actually pays over. Well, the next break. The next say. break, let's say that. The in between, so you don't have to listen to the commercials. If you're on Facebook Live, you can watch Ashley. Not only we talk about this concept, don't look, talk, or touch, we also talk about no tension on the leash. No tension on the leash. And Ashley's going to hopefully do a little demonstration. You know, WC Fields would never work with children or animals because they were always so unpredictable. So that was his, do you know who WC Fields is? I heard. You heard. <laughs> okay. Well, all right. Well, he wouldn't work with children or animals because of their unpredictability. So anytime you're working with dogs live, you're always taking a little risk of embarrassment. I remember doing it with my first police dog. I was on stage at a high school, and uh, he, you know he had to relieve himself behind me, and I didn't realize that at the time I was on stage with about 300 kids, and they all started laughing. I couldn't understand what they were laughing at, and I looked behind him. I, my beautifully well-trained German Shepherd was taking this huge dump on the stage. <laughs> needless to say, needless to say, that was over. I couldn't recover from that, so it just exit stage it's left, stage right. right? Yeah. So anyway. Um, all right, I'm, I'm getting sidetracked. So we'll talk a little bit about, uh, you know, not looking, talking, and touching, and uh, you know, just kind of what we do uh, at day, do doggy daycare. That's a benefit to the dog. Well, you know, we're taking a lot of the, you know, added, I don't want to say distractions, but things in life that dogs don't have to worry about. I mean, we're very regimented at doggy daycare. The dogs, even to the fact that we keep pretty much their play groups relatively the same. You know, it might change here and there if we have a new dog, but you know, most of these dogs, you know, we keep them on kennel leads and stuff like that, but most of them, once they come into the back, pretty much know where their play group is and it's very fluid and they're not running back and forth. You know, they know where to go. Um, you know, we had a bunch of dogs that wanted to go outside today, but just because they're used to it, but it was seven degree weather, it wasn't. Right, so, so what we do, is exactly what you said. We provide pack structure. So we take, we don't have doorbell ringing, we don't have people come, we don't have children running through the rooms, we don't have garbage men, mailmen. So what we allow, and by we don't breed discriminate by the way, which is right, one which thing is that, it's huge. And it's almost, if, if a place discriminates against the breed of dog, I mean, if you go to a pet care facility, very honestly, because it's offensive to me, it's offensive to me that my insurance company raises my premiums if I have Rin Tin Tin. Rin Tin Tin is a bully breed, a German Shepherd, can you imagine? This is insanity, so that's an annoying topic. But yeah, so we provide, at doggy daycare, I like to say dogs can hump, jump, and dump. They, that, that's their needs. Children need to run around, get dirty in a playground. They can't live in a sterile environment. So that is the quite natural thing that we provide, the structure, the structure. So, um, yeah, so people come and they understand and they trust us because we're very transparent. We don't BS people. No. We don't nickel and dime them, right? And we set up play groups. It doesn't matter if it's a pit bull, a poodle. We place them by size and temperament. Not to say, by the way, we don't take their size and power and certain genetic predispositions into consideration. We certainly do. But if you look online, if you go on houndstownusa.com, or our YouTube channel, you'll see play groups of 20 dogs together. They are a, a group by size and temperament. Right. And that's important. No, it definitely is. You know, because a lot of places don't do that, but it might not be an intentional injury, but if you have a St. Bernard playing with a Maltese, you know, they're not evenly matched. So that runs into, the dog can just step on the other dog right. and then you're going to have an issue. So last week we talked about don't look, talk, or touch. When we go to the break, you're going to demonstrate what we mean by that. You just don't yeah. stare, you don't touch, and you don't talk unnecessarily. Because all a dog hears, when you're talking to your dog because it doesn't process human language, they just hear blah, 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 blah. They see your lips moving, but there's no connection to what you want from them. So we teach the dogs what we want. We positively reinforce that behavior with love and affection. So right. you're constantly going to see Ashley teaching the dog what it wants, and then reinforcing that, or, or validating that behavior by uh, positive reinforcement, which is of course physical praise and love. Also, oh, Jackie's telling me, I gotta give a shout out to Sydney, her dog has been coming, Sydney, Sydney, oh, Sydney. Hi, Sydney, shout out. Um, yeah, so we're gonna, when, we go, when we go to the break, those of you on Facebook Live, stay with us, stay with us on that. And also tension. No, if you got tension on the leash, that puts tension in the dog's body. Tension. It, it's uh, so these things are all connected. So again, we're going to take a break. 
and we're going to talk. We're going to demonstrate the leash training, and then in the third, is there another seven minute break after or no? No, it's another two minute break. After two that. minutes. Is yeah. there no more seven minute breaks? That's it. Yeah, just That's seven it. minutes okay. this time. All right, so seven minutes this time, and every week, if you follow this, we'll we'll show Indy's development, and we'll add all the things on our what we the top ten tips. So the first topic we listed to was don't talk, touch, or look, and don't put tension on the leash. That was number two. Right. So we're going to demonstrate that. And um, and then you got to learn how to read your dog's behavior. So you're going to see very clearly when we say read your dog. Some dogs, if they used to have their mouth open and pant a lot, and then they shut their mouth, that means something. There's ears. Everything is told to you by the dog's body, his face, his ears, and his tail. Do you agree with that, I Ashley? I agree with that. Yep. All right. So then let's. Um, we're going to get set up. We're going to take this break. Get set up. You can go ahead out there and. Uh, and go do your thing and we'll be back watch keep folks watch us here we're going to squeak we're going to watch us on facebook live see you after the break for those of you without facebook live so all you have to do is hold contraction is that little lever that's by your face yeah, this right. one right here hold you it. just Open it, and this whole top will come off. All right, go do your thing. We're going outside, folks, and watch the action. You're not keeping to the script, by the way. I know, I'm bad, <laughs> because I can't go by you. Jackie, you're texting me, James. That's no good. All right, you're coming out? I think so. All right, come out here. Hi, how are you? Just doing a little demonstration on Facebook Live. So there's our little friend, Indy. Notice her body is relaxed, so there's no tension on the leash. See the little children? The little... Come back this way, Ashley. It's too far away. Come closer. The dog's on her left. Come towards us. Go right. And notice the dog is adapting to her. She's not adapting. There's some reinforcement. Make a left. Okay. Just move. And make a right. No tension. Her arms are dropped at her side. There's Make a left, then slow down, come to a stop. No talking. She's touching when the dog does a good behavior. Now there's distractions in the back. That's what's important here. There are so many things happening in this airport that most people don't pay attention to. There's kids screaming back there. And there's these little, uh, what do you call those? The suitcases that drag. A, a dragging suitcase to a dog is another animal. Just like a car is an animal. The garbage truck is an animal. The mailman is an animal. Step out with your eyes. Don't say. You're still worried about the joke. That's right. Step away. So this looks simple, and it, it is relatively simple, but we, we just reinforce this over and over again and then she can do whatever she wants. I wish I had my squeaky toy, but you go over there, and I can walk by. I can get my newspaper, and I can run around, and I can get the book, <laughs> or not. <laughs> then she's gonna go play. Then, so she's gonna put him in a place, go ahead. This is what I told you about WC Fields. But that's okay, we don't freak out. You see no screaming, nothing happened. And she puts him in a place, and he's in his place, and she walks away. So I overdid it. That's my problem in life. I'm always overdoing things. I overdid it, showing off, distracted the dog. If I did this all day long, the dog would be as used to this as he possibly could. So this is our demonstration. Now watch what happens when we talk about no talk or touch. She's looking at us, not the dog. When she looks at the dog and drops low, the dog will come to him. Her, watch. Go ahead, look. <laughs> Dropped, looked, now she talks in touch. Then she picks up a leash, she stops talking and touching, and she moves. And the dog will adapt. Come a little closer to us. And then slow down, come to a stop. The dog sits, notice her body language, drop the leash, step, uh, step out with your right. No problem, little mistake, go back and fix it. No problem. This is not, this is a dog from a shelter. 
Dogs don't have different brains. There's not German Shepherd brains. There's not pit bull brains. One brain is the dog brain. Again, she's looking here. No look, talk, and touch. Now she's going to just drop, and the dog will come to her. Period. Then she's going to pick up the leash, and because she wants him in a, uh, to stay in one spot, she's going to put him in place. And then you can slide over. See if you can get that. And then walk away. I listened to your show last week. It was great. Oh. Hey! See how he reacted to sound? I'm just going to get my little... We got, we got to go back. Two minutes. All right, we got two minutes. We'll go back. We're going to pick up on this every week. We're going to have Indy, some dog, just demonstrating these simple concepts. This is not a lot of work. It's consistency, consistency, simple consistency. Let's go, Ashley. She said she heard that, Jackie. <laughs> uh, you know that is. Well, you should do a shout out to Lori. She has Jesse, Mitzi, and Scout that come. They've been coming for a long time, but they are also watching. Yeah, I do that one. Well, they're watching us right now. They're watching us on Facebook. Oh, well, Lori. hi. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the Dish on Dogs, the show that will hopefully bridge the gap between the human brain and the dog brain. And, you know, I, I very frequently, and I'm here, of course, uh, you're listening to Hound, uh, Houndstown Radio and the Dish on Dogs. I'm here with the lovely Ashley Pizzo and her wonderful sidekick, Indy. <laughs> and if you were here during the break, we were on Facebook Live. And, you know, as I said, the, the, Working with a dog live at an airport that's probably never been to an airport. No, it hasn't. 
he, he's never been on to an airport. So, but it does show the simplicity. And if you were watching, we made a few a little mistake here and there. It's basically my fault. I took a picked up a newspaper and. Uh, he, he, you know, he was uh, distracted by it. But the point was, the observation that should have been made is that how the, a dog in another environment is perfectly fine, and then they come into an environment that's slightly different. I mean, an airport has got carpeted floors, but it also has echoes, PA systems. Uh, there's so much distractions that human brain doesn't uh, process. We, we exclude it. We're, we're actually blind to some of these things. So, so that was a very interesting uh, demonstration, and I think you did really well, actually. I think Indy did well. And the point, the point was that the dogs don't come from a special planet, so there's no pit bull brain, there's no golden retriever brain, just like humans. There's no Muslim brain, Catholic brain, they're all the same brains. Uh, we all share similar emotions. Human brain hate, dog brain don't hate. Humans that may be racist, dogs aren't racist. This is what makes the beauty. This is why we bond with them. They're pure. They're pure. They don't care what you were doing when you come home at three o'clock in the morning. They don't care whose telephone number you have in your pocket. They don't care. They just want to be safe and secure. They want you to provide them the safety and security. So what humans don't do, they buy them the best beds, the best food, the best veterinary care. They bring them to Houndstown, which is wonderful. And we take care of their brains there. We take care of the dog brain there. You guys got all the other stuff taken care of. I don't have to teach one human being how to love their dog. If I say to somebody, praise their dog, they, they break out and they of such emotional, so that's easy. But putting structure in the dog's life, forget about it. It doesn't happen and it's so simple because it's structure doesn't mean, it's not a disciplinarian, yelling and screaming. In fact, as we said, we don't talk to dogs because dogs don't talk. As I said, I, how long have I been asking for the talking dog, Ashley? As long as I've been working there. Right, $100,000 to the first person that brings me the talk. I'm, I'll up it to a quarter of a million dollars to the first person that brings me a dog that talks in, in human language. And I'll be happy, I'll take him on the road and uh, that's it. So, so by talking to a dog and then by yelling at a dog and screaming at a dog makes no sense. So I watch what people do. Dog jumps on a couch, they may launch a can of pennies at them and scream. It makes no sense to the dog, it just frightens the dog. So we never want a dog to be afraid. We want the dogs to respect our leadership because that's what they need. Pack animals need structure. We need structure, right? So when we're, we need structure in our lives. When we go on an airplane, there's absolute structure. You have to line up in a certain way. You have to listen to the instructions of the TSA. If you don't, you don't get on the plane. If you don't buckle your seatbelt, you don't fly on the airplane. So right. very fast. That makes us safe and secure also of by having that structure. Right, well it's part of human, be anybody who, <laughs> everybody knows about structure. If you go to a job, you know that there's a boss and there's subordinates, not everybody it can be the boss, there's one boss. And dogs, once they have that security, they relax. And it's kind of ironic when we see that. So again, I was kind of kiddingly asked, how do you think dogs tell time? The only way dogs tell time is by human rituals and changes in the environment, right? So the dog learns what the morning is by the first time your feet touch the floor when you're getting out of bed. That's when they know it's morning. They wouldn't know it any other time. At two o'clock in the morning, you could drive by Doggy to Houndstown, you could buy, drive by any shelter on Long Island. You won't hear a peep. The only time they get crazy is in the morning when they hear the first car pull into the parking lot. And because they know the next thing is the, the ritual they're of getting feeding, fed. Yeah. they're getting fed, etc. So I think that, you know, you do this day in and day out. So what is the importance of not putting tension on the leash? Why, when you were walking around doing the demonstration, when I say that, don't put tension on the leash, what, what's the importance of that? I think the main thing is too, you know, he's never been in the airport before or, or, you know, if we would have taken him to a horse barn or a field or something, you know, it would have been a different situation. But when you put tension on the leash, you're adding anxiety to the dog because they can't, you're now, I don't know the right way to say it, but you're putting Restraint. your anxiety well, right, that's on the right. dog. So just by virtue of the word, tension. Tension goes down the leash. When you restrain something, anything, if you're walking and, and, and something is restrained, it actually promotes the behavior you're trying not to. 
So when Ashley was moving around, if you put tension on the leash, the dog doesn't trust that things are good there. So right. does that, does that, I don't know if I'm explaining it right. No, I think so. It's the same thing, like I'm afraid of heights. So if I'm walking, you know, next to a glass window on the 30th floor of a hotel, I don't want to be touched. So, you know, I get more anxiety right. when someone's, you know, trying That's to a pretty good analogy. pull me around yeah, they, and push me. Right. So generally, right, so we talked last week, if you tether a dog to anything, whether it's you or something else, the dog, and then it sees a distraction, it sees another dog, it sees a car, it sees a bicycle. I don't care what the movement is. The movement to the dog is just another animal. And dogs don't see that well, by the way. They got great peripheral vision. They see movement very clearly. But their vision is not multi-chromatic. I don't know if that's the word, we'll have to fact check that. But they don't see in color. They don't see in like deep colors. They see shades and it's, it's almost like walking around with sunglasses on, if you wanna use that analogy. And that's the point that we try to talk about is try to understand the world the way your dog sees it or not sees it. It doesn't see it. It's living 18 inches off the ground. It doesn't have thumbs. So the only way it can get up into our human world is to jump. And then when it jumps, sometimes you hit him over the head with a newspaper or sometimes you give him a hug or you give him a cookie, depending. So, so really, humans are the problem. Wouldn't you agree? I do agree. Do, <laughs> they confuse the dog. So of course they, they jump on the counter to get a cookie, right? but then when it's Thanksgiving dinner, nobody wants to go jumping on the counter. Exactly, exactly. Or the couch is, the dog's on the couch watching Dr. Phil, but when you have company over, you're screaming at the dog to get off the... So it's confusing the hell out of the dog. And they can't understand why there's a difference. Right, and this is why dogs start fighting people, because out of confusion, conflict, dogs have only one way to resolve conflict. One way, and that is how, Ashley? With their mouth. With their mouth. They don't have opposing thumbs. They can't call 911. They can't call an attorney. They can't even get out of your house. They might hate you, and they're stuck with you. You might think, you're the, I think I'm the greatest parent in the world. You talk to my three kids, trust me, they will not agree with you. So we have these dogs that are essentially our hostages. We think we're great, right? We go to the shelter, we take a dog. We laugh, we usually laugh when we see the reward for the you know, lost dog. I, I think the dogs are gonna come up behind and take the signs down because they don't wanna be found, right? Because we're bringing them back. We're bringing them back to the same home. So don't, ah, it's hard for us to say, but this is all we do day in and day out. Try to explain to wonderful people, these are wonderful. And you know the irony is, my dip, most difficult clients have this sophisticated academic brain, and I mean that. They're professors, they're lawyers, they're doctors, they're analytical. When I have somebody on the phone, and they're telling me about their pet behavior, and they're telling me how difficult time they're having, invariably they do something that has, analyzes information. So they're consumed so much by the analytical aspect. You know who never calls me? Farmers. Farmers don't wake up in the morning and wonder why the cow is not looking so happy. There's a thousand cows. They wake up, they don't worry about the chicken. They wanna make sure. So they have a very balanced life out on the farm. In our houses, we live in craziness. Children, I mean, just, and just think of the poor dog who's not a, he's not a human. He'll never be a human. He's trying to figure us out and we are crazy sometimes. Right, Ashley? Yeah. What else do you want to add before we go to this break? What else? What? Any words of wisdom? You're the professor. I know. I'm the professor. You're the manager of, ma of packs. What did, what's the number one thing you do when you put a pack of dogs together? Well, size and temperament for us. And then we try not to intervene is the biggest thing. Right. Let dogs be dogs. Just imagine if you're always nagging your kids, telling them how to play. Don't get dirty. Stand up. Don't blah, blah, blah. You know how annoying that is? I remember when I was a little kid, my parents used to dress me up in these like snow suits. I couldn't even move. I couldn't even move. And then they don't want you to get wet. They don't want you to, yeah. I mean, you give me- like the Christmas story. Exactly. So leave your kids and your dogs alone. Let them have some yeah. fun their way. Let them decide what's fun to them. And if it means digging a hole, let them dig a hole. If it means rolling around in grass or whatever, just do it, right? <laughs> what, why are you laughing? All right, I'm delirious. All right, join us. <laughs> You're listening to The Dish on Dogs. Come back after our two minute break and we'll, uh, we'll talk some more about uh, dog behavior. Thanks folks.
take my way up to it. This is going to be a third segment. Just the third? Yep. You sure? It's the fourth. Yeah, oh, it is the fourth segment. You, have right here, that one. you hear that, Jackie? Professor, tell me it's the third segment. Well, you're not following the script. <laughs> Poor Melissa slaved over this. No, she didn't. She <laughs> needs some blanks. I saw her. She'll need some blanks. Well, I had half an hour to do it. Mm -hmm. so. mm. Next week, we're going to do it on Sunday. That'll make life easier. So every Sunday, we'll be at our productive year. I can have it done before Sunday for another topic. Mm. Let's push it. So we're talking about the charity next segment, yes. correct? Yes. Yes. Are you going to get the charity? What's our next tip? For next so it week? should be one or two places. Next huh? week. Do you want me to post those videos and you're going to talk about them? Yes. Go and on what? On what? Uh, we're going to post them on the charity page. On what? Right? Do you want me to post them on Why this town radio? On the radio? I can. All right. Just me? I'm going to do that in there. Right. Yeah, we got to clear out of here real quick because there's another show coming. Okay. we got to clean up and get out real fast. In five, four. Welcome back, everybody, to the Dish on Dogs. I'm your host, Mike Gould. Uh, this is the show about dogs. That's what we talk about, dog behavior and the dog brain. Any of the things we talk about, if you go to Houndstown Radio Facebook page, we're going to be putting up videos about everything we talk about. So there should be corresponding videos on Houndstown Radio. we got some really cool, I think, cool videos. I mean, obviously, if you're listening and you like dogs or are interested in dog behavior, then you should... Uh, you should follow us on Houndstown Radio. One thing I have to clear up from one of my staunch critics down in Beverly Hills, Florida, I said Jackie quit on us. I was teasing, <laughs> all right? She hasn't fully quit yet. She just says she's too old to be up at this hour, oh. 8 o'clock. She just she likes to have <laughs> a nice play. At this point, she's probably trying to get half yourself out of trouble. Yeah, I can't, yeah, <laughs> I can't get, keep myself out of trouble. All right, but anyway, yes. So, so here is uh, Ashley Pizzo with me and her dog, Indy. And before the break, we're just talking about animal behavior, and we wanted to put it in some kind of order that makes sense. So if you notice one thing, we, the leash and collar is always on the dog, and the right collar. So if, again, if you're on Facebook Live, we don't use pinch collars, we don't use harnesses. There's proper equipment, right? Just like you have the right tires on your car. If you have a flat tire, you could have a Maserati, but one flat tire, you're not going anywhere. So it's very important to have the right equipment. And at Houndstown University, this is what we show people, the simplicity of it. Uh, so, so the right equipment, and we start by always having a leash and collar on the dog. And we, we, the, we, the tip for this week is the dog should be in one of two places, either under your supervision or in a crate. I know people think about a crate as a cage, but don't forget, dogs are denning animals. That's where they're safe and secure, in their den. They don't know it's a cage, you know it's a cage. And a crate should never be used for punishment, admonishment, timeout. This is crazy. Dogs don't understand the concept of timeout. Very frequently what we do actually counter trains the dogs because dogs make such quick connections of things. So if a dog is afraid, let's say the dog is barking at the mailman and you put him in the crate. Now he barks at the mailman more because he wants to get into his crate, into the safety and security of the crate. So the crate, we call it a den. We can call it cages, whatever the heck you want to call it. So when we're training dogs, they're in one of two places, on a leash and collar. It doesn't mean that you have to be holding the leash, but if it jumps up on the couch, you pull him off the couch. And then you praise him, you love him. You get off your ass, get on the floor, and pet your dog on the floor. You know how simple that is? From, <laughs> instead of inviting your dog up on the couch, 
even me, with all my physical condition, I can still get on the floor, watch TV, and pet my dog, period. So, so it, it's the simplicity of this all that we, we want to talk about. Right. So we, you just had the customer that um, you just did the training with had a misconception about the crate. Oh, right. She and adamantly I, refused to yeah. use it. Adamantly. I don't and the mean, dogs in the first five minutes we put them in there weren't right, happy, right. but that's because she was right. still staring Again, at Again, it's like a child in a crib. Of course, the first few minutes, they're going to try to manipulate right. you. It's the same. But once they understand the safety and security of it, it's analogous to putting fish in water. When people say, I don't like a crate, I ask them what their feelings are putting fish in water. Or right. Do you feel bad that the fish is getting wet? Because if you do, the, you take the fish out, watch Dr. Phil, the fish is going to die, almost certain, right? right? So fish belong in water, birds belong in nests. And we should talk about our charity. We have to talk about our charity. Houndstown Charities, rehabilitating people through animals. So all of our dogs, almost everything we do has a human component to it. So Houndstown Charities is a 501c3. And for those of you listening, and if you go on Instagram and just type in Zooming Rosie, how do you just say zooming? Yeah, zoom it, you're right. Zooming Rosie. You're going to see this magnificent dog that Ashley and I are actually going to California on Monday. Will we be back for the show? Yeah, no. no. Yeah, we're leaving Tuesday. Tuesday. We're going to LA to pick up Zooming Rosie. She's got her own Instagram. She's an inspiration. For those of you who are complaining that it's too cold, that was me. Uh, it's too hot, that's me. Zooming Rosie is an inspiration. She has no use of her back leg. She's in a, would you call it a wheelchair? Yeah, it's a, a doggy wheelchair. Doggy wheelchair. But this dog runs around like a lunatic. She has no, she doesn't have, feel any pain. She doesn't complain. She just, she's a wonderful dog. So watch Zooming Rosie. So our charity, this is the essence of what our charity does. We do behavioral things. We don't just... Look, there's wonderful charities out there, as I always say, and they do amazing things, and we work with most of them. But Houndstown Charities, is we work with the more difficult dogs, right? right. And, and will you show some of the dogs, like Cappuccino? Yep, I just posted his video on Houndstown Radio, so after the, uh, the oh, show. Oh, so yeah, as, after this Facebook Live, if you go to Houndstown Radio Facebook, you'll see videos of Cappuccino. These dogs that were doomed, they were red dogs, euthanization was it joe our amazing joe, joe? yeah he was undiagnosed Un deaf dog. undiagnosed deaf dog can you imagine and he was in a shelter for seven years so these are examples of what houndstown charities do and all of our franchisees in all five states assist and do the similar things we work with the prisons uh our bergen county uh houndstown in jersey they have this great relationship where they take dogs from the shelter almost weekly and provide an outlet for the dogs to run around. So we're, I'm very proud of that. I'm more proud of that than I am the other things that we do. Um, you know, because it is, it's, it's really amazing. And it's sad that people are still go out and, I don't know, I just, like I said, if you saw Indy before, you, you're not gonna find a better, healthier, sounder dog than that. No. Do you agree with that? I do agree with it, yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm glad you agree. Uh, all right, so Wade, tell me a little bit about Indy. How did you end up getting getting him? Um, pretty much, I mean, it was actually, you know, just by working at Houndstown, and I actually knew a couple people I graduated with from high school, you know, worked in um, Town of Brookhaven, and they knew I grew up with Great Danes my whole life. So I got a picture sent to me I by- That's a Great Dane? Supposed to be. Oh, okay. So supposed that to. was half the story. He was supposed to be a Great Dane. I got a picture oh, of a four month old we supposed he Great was on, Dane puppy. He was on like match.dog.com. Exactly. He False to, profile. He tried to purport himself to be a Great Dane. Yeah, oh, no, he's okay. definitely not. But, well, um, but the point is, you got the point of the matter. You got him from the Brookhaven shelter. An amazing dog. By the way, the folks at Brookhaven are wonderful. We have yeah. wonderful uh, Houndstown Charities that does work with every rescue, every every uh, municipal shelter on Long Island. In a couple of weeks, we're gonna be training. Uh, we're gonna be doing some training for our friends in, in one of the shelters on Long Island. So um, yeah, if you go to our Houndstown charity page, you'll see some videos. I think some of them are really heartwarming, especially the Cappuccino one. Cappuccino was severely abused. It's yeah. hard to watch the beginning of the video, but by the end of the video, you'll be yeah. watching because it has a really great ending. And I know a lot of times, I know Jackie doesn't like to watch those commercials with all, and I don't either. I think it's exploitative, really. So we, we don't exploit people anywhere. 
But it is amazing to watch these dogs come from full circle. Just a full circle. Full right. circle. Joe, the deaf dog who wanted to kill everybody, uh, found his way. And what, like Jackie pointed out last week, Joe was completely deaf and he lived in a shelter for seven years until we put him with a pack of dogs and he was probably one of the happiest dogs around. When you, that, you should take credit for that because you were able to get him in a, in a pack. And when you think about how silly it is when we wonder if dogs will do good in a pack, they're pack animals, they're dogs. So right. it shouldn't surprise anyone that dogs, it's like saying, I wonder if my child wants to go to Disney World. Of course they do, they're a child. So, so some of this stuff is, I guess, frustrating to us, right? But to be honest, we can share that we both pretty simple-minded, wouldn't you say? You I would say okay, that, yeah. right. But I know I'm simple-minded, and I think the people, <laughs> truthfully, like we're animal people, they, they just have their brain operate slightly differently. You know, horse people, animal people, we just kind of get the dogs, and we don't get the humans so much. They're, they're too complicated for us. And that's not, that's not saying a bad thing. I wish I was academically inclined. You know, I wish I could read, sit and read a book from cover to cover. I just can't, just can't happen for me. My brain just can't deal with that. So anyway, I'm sure my friends in Florida will get a laugh out of that, how simple-minded I am. All right, again, you're listening to The Dish on Dog every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. You can look at, and they can listen live at LI... News Radio. LINewsradio.com. Yep. Listen live. And then, of course, we're going to do next week again Facebook Live so we can follow the uh, training of Indy, yep. right? Indy. Indy. And we're off to Florida. Will, will we be back with Zooming Rosie? No, we won't be back with Zooming Rosie. Yes, we will. Next week. Not Monday. We'll leave in Tuesday. But we'll the be following. here live Monday night. Listen live next Monday night. Follow us on Facebook, folks. Good night. Hi, everyone. Bye.